Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative One Studio. Hey everybody, I hope you had a wonderful week. We had a good week. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun because it kind of started out with uh, going to the early American homestead show put on by Dick and Don Russell of Holly Hill Primitives in Holly, Michigan. <laughs> that was a mouthful. They had a, a wonderful show that they have usually every spring and fall, and because of COVID, they didn't have it at all last year. And they have vendors come from all over the Midwest, and they have, it's very primitive, it's a very primitive show. Antiques and the handmaids that are there are very primitive. I didn't buy a lot of things that I wanted to just for the fact that I'm at a point where I if I don't have somewhere to put something or I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it I'm not gonna buy it so that being said I will be showing as part of that in the hall and what else did we do uh, not a whole lot we did get the have the grandkids over on Thursday, we missed them so much. We hadn't had them for the last couple of weeks. So we were so happy to have them again. And I said it could go one of two ways. She could be really, I knew Bubby would be fine. Bubby is his nickname. His name is Easton. But I knew he would be fine. But with Ellery, I was like, she's either going to be super excited to see us or she's not going to want her mom to leave. <laughs> So thankfully it was the first and she was very happy to see us. She hugged me and she hugged me and hugged me and wouldn't let me put her down and she was super snuggly and my heart was overjoyed. So yeah, that was wonderful. I got the summer punch needle done for Primitive Stitcher and I'm sorry, Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine. And <laughs> I ended up punching it twice because the first one, I don't know, it's kind of a, it's hard to explain it without showing it to you. So I'm just going to wait till the design comes out and then I'll explain it. But basically I wasn't sure I loved the first one. So I punched it again using some slightly different colors and leaving a couple things out that were in the first one. And then I'm like, once I got done with that, I'm like, nope, that like the first one. <laughs> and then how that goes. So, whoops. So the second one, I'm actually going to give away. So when that summer magazine comes out, that will be one of my giveaways. It's not going to be fully finished, but it is fully punched. And then I recorded myself finishing it. So whoever wins it, and if they want to finish it like I did, then uh, they can watch that video. It's a super small one. It needed to be small. Well, I wanted it to be small for a couple of reasons. One is just time-wise, I didn't have a lot of time to get this done. The second reason is because I have been doing a lot of big punch needle lately. And as much as I love it, I know that it can be costly for people because it uses a lot of floss. So this one is small. It's like, I want to say a two, like two by three maybe. And it's a very basic, simple design, but the way it's finished, it's just super cute. You're going to love it. I love it anyway. And then I got my fabric line done. I worked on it until midnight last night because I'm like, I am not going into next week working on this fabric line. I have to have it done. Well, she said she'd give me a couple weeks into April, and guess what? It's a couple weeks into April. And so I just, I don't like to be, I thought I'd get it done early actually, but it takes a long time to develop a fabric line. There's a lot of thought that goes into it too as far as the the different prints. The, like I did a big panel and then I did a repeating stripe. So those are like, uh, I'm sorry. Those are like my two uh, focus pieces. And then 
you want to have coordinating pieces that go with it, like maybe a medium-sized print and then some smaller prints. And there was so much going on in the repeating stripe that I had so many ideas. I had to really narrow it down to, okay, what, what will be the best for the line? I could have done a lot, a lot more with the coordinating fabrics, but so <laughs> I had enough on my platter just getting done what I needed to get done. So I, cause I said originally I thought I'd have enough time to kind of overachieve and give them more than what they needed. And then they could choose what they thought would be best because they're the professionals when it comes to quilting. But, uh, anyway, I was lucky to get done what I had to get done. I'm just glad. I'm just glad it's done. And Oh my goodness. So it will come out. I want to say March. It comes out in the spring. It's a Halloween line. All right, I only had one question. I didn't even write her name down. I apologize for that. She asked, do you get to decide what you put in the magazine, punch needle or cross stitch? Deb is very just trusting. And actually this year was the first year because, because I do both. When I first started, I only did punch needle in the magazine. And then I started filtering in some cross stitch here and there. And this year was the first year we actually said, okay, this is what we're going to do for the full year. So uh, I think it's nice to do a couple punch needle and a couple cross stitch. That way it breaks it up. Okay. I want the punch needle community to continue to grow and have things to work on because it still is my number one thing other than painting <laughs> but it's my as far as needlework goes it is my number one thing to do I love it so much matter of fact I'm working on one I can't show you because it's for my May release but uh I'm just starting a new one and I can't. once I start a punch needle I'm like a fiend like I work on it every night until it's done because I I get so excited like a little kid whips I I have no needlework whips I was my plan was to stitch every night but I just couldn't do that knowing I had this fabric line to get done and I just decided to stay focused and I and but anyway so I have art though because I still do Witch Paint Wednesday and I have CW Live so I have a whip here behind me it kind of looks like wood the way it's painted so I worked on this for Witch Paint Wednesday. I'll show you the sketch that's going to go on it. This is a three foot diameter cradled board. So I wanted to have texture painted on this cradle board before I did the painting. So I, that's what I worked on for Witch Paint Wednesday. And basically I just used blue, different shades of blue paint, some rust color paint, white paint, and I just used the layering block. So, and I just rubbed the layering block up and down. And I think it's pretty cool how it turned out because it looks like old wood. And I'm painting another uh, Mary and Jesus painting. This time Jesus is a little bit older though. So it was a sketch that I did in my sketchbook, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. So I'll be working on that during Wednesdays. And then for finishes in CW Live, we worked on home and we got that all done. Mine is all finished and crackled and everything. So I think it turned out cute. We had a good time doing it. You know, it was our first class for this session. And so I thought something, you know, more simple and basic. And, you know, we have some experienced painters in there, but we also have people that have never painted before ever. So this was a good one to begin with. There's not a lot of shading and things like that. So, but it's super prim and I think it's so cute. Oh, I don't know where to put it. And I got a couple of previous finishes to show you. I am doing my best. I, I'm, I'm, coining the phrase or the thought or whatever of finishing Fridays. I have a lot of cross stitch that I didn't fully finish when I was doing market. Before I started doing floss tube, I didn't fully finish a lot of my cross stitch. They're smaller and I just, 
put them on, I didn't even know at that time, because I wasn't into floss tube, I didn't know about sticky board, so I was using um, foam core, and I was using double-sided ATG tape to get it to stick on there. So this one, I went ahead and I took it off that foam core, and thank goodness none of the stitches pulled out. But the second one I'm going to show you, I it has a lot of stitching on it, and I thought, oh my lord, I'm not going to risk pulling those threads out. So I left it on the foam core. You'll see it. It's not that centered and stuff. But So this is the first one. This is called For You, and it was stitched 2 over 2 on 30 count Weeks Dye Works Mocha. My first ones I had stitched were pretty much all done on mocha or cocoa linen. This was uh, stitched by Cheryl Smith of Fredonia, Kentucky. Thank you so much. It's so cute. I love this one. And it has Weeks and DMC. And then what I did, this is just a wooden block I got from probably Joanne. That's where I get most of those. I can see a piece of hot glue. So then I just stuck the piece to sticky board. And then you can see behind the piece, there's that fabric that's, it's homespun fabric anyway. So I chose some homespun fabric that matched just to kind of give it a little bit more of a nice finished border. So that's for you. I don't know when the release date was. When I first started doing cross stitch, I didn't put the year that I released them. Bad Teresa, bad Teresa. And then, oh, this one. I've loved this one since it came back from the lady that stitched it. I have loved it, loved it, loved it. And I am so happy to have it finally fully finished. Finally fully finished. So that's F, 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 O. <laughs> Anyways, and I, I just love the prim look of it. So this is called God is Good, and I'll zoom in in a minute. Stitch 2 over 2 on 35 count linen was stitched by Holly Seward of Danville, Pennsylvania. And this is using all Weeks Dye Works. Oh, it's Tin Roof. Weeks Dye Works Tin Roof. I want to zoom in because I just love this finish. What I did is I have a lot of frames left from our primitive folk business back when we used to frame my artwork. And I took one of the black frames and it was just painted black. So I grungied it up and then stained it. I didn't stain it. Well, okay. I don't like using stain because it's smelly and it stains your hands and it's, it's messy. It's, you know, the cleanup is a pain. All I do now is I just take raw umber acrylic paint and water it down and rub it on. And then there's no smell, cleans up with water, super simple. And then I used another piece of homespun. So this is 11 by 14. That's 11 by 14 sticky board in the background with homespun stuck to it. The piece is actually on foam core, like I was saying. So the borders, it, it's not perfectly straight like I do it now. This is, you know, back in the day. And then I use Dames of the Needle Noir Pom Pom, mini pom pom trim around the edge. And it's just, the colors are so prim in this. I just think it's precious. So this, I'm gonna find a spot either here in my studio or at the house for this because I just love it. Love it. This one, it was stitched on what? 35 count linen. So the stitch count is 180 by 129. It's it's fairly large. And there's that's full coverage stitching in the the grass here. Now you could leave the grass out and it would look more. I mean, you wouldn't have to put all that grass in. And it looks, I think it looks so good on that tin roof gray linen. I just Oh, I love it. So I have haul because we went to that early American homestead show. So I want to share that with you guys. 
my first purchase was an antique child's school slate. What was the name of it? Look at this. She, this is so cute. She has pens that she sticks her business card in and puts it in your bag. But look at how cute her business card is, y'all. I gotta scooch in. It might be not cute to people that don't like primitive dolls. Look how cute. <laughs> and then here's all her information on the back. Primitives by Old Lady Morgan. She was a sweetheart. So I bought this antique child's plaque. And the funny part is, I've never seen one of these in a store or at a show. And I saw, after I bought this one, it was the first thing I bought. I saw them in a couple other, at least one other booth, I think a couple other booths. So this is gonna be so cool for finishing chalkboard. And you can write on both, well, the kids could have wrote on both sides. I got something else in her booth, what the heck was it? Oh, the other thing I got in her booth, it was a butter paddle, which, I can't show you because I used it on the finish for the Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine. Then the new, next booth I went into, actually the next booth I went into, I didn't buy anything because she does Punch Needle. She had some of my Punch Needle in there. It was all like finished punch, fully finished Punch Needle she was selling. It's called Youper Trails Punch Needle. There you go. Yeah, she has um, a website. You can check her out. I'm. She was super nice, and she had really creative and fun finishing ideas. It was awesome. Then the next booth I went into, The Old Crow, and her name is Janice. You would not believe this. Oh, I love, I absolutely love her business card, too. But she had so many great things in there. But like I said, I was there for finish, mostly finishing things. Uh, I, the two things I did buy from her are not for finishing, but they're little. So I went, I went ahead and told myself I could get them. <laughs> I'm so good to myself. Okay. This is just a little pillow from, I don't know, from like a some sort of woven coverlet or something. And she made it into a little pillow and I think it'll be just cute sitting on a shelf and then this I love old tins especially little kid tins but look at all the little bunnies on it I should take that off yeah it's so cute all the little bunnies little Easter tin probably had candy in it at one time Super cute. Oh yeah, and it had a handle on it. How was the handle on? Oh, right here, I see it now. Yeah, it had a little handle on it. It's broke off, but I don't care. I think it's just adorable the way it is. So I'm just gonna have that sitting on display. But here's her business card. And then here's the other side. So they are in St. John, Michigan, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm dropping stuff. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So, and my husband was in there when they said that, and my husband goes, road trip, and I was like, yes. <laughs> I don't know when, but we are going to check it out. And then, uh, what else did I get? The last two, I don't have their business cards, unfortunately. But I got this super cool tin box. Now this is for finishing. It's rusty and green. It's super cool. But with a punch needle or cross stitch on it, isn't it cute? I love that. And then 
I got this for finishing as well in that same booth. This is actually slate. Isn't it cool? Can you imagine a round punch needle on that? I'll probably grungy it up with some black paint. Maybe even do some of that cool rust. Pantina on it. And then I also got this for finishing. Oh my goodness. I feel another bee design coming on. This I'm going to design whatever I'm going to design is going to fit on this. Is that not cool? Oh, I love it. Okay, and then <laughs> the other things I got. I love old breadboards and dough boards. I collect them and paint my early American folk art on them. They're hard to find, and if you find a big one, you're normally going to pay $120 and up for them. Now, years ago, I bought a round one. It was probably 24 inch round and it had the handle at the top with the hole in it and I painted a crow house on it. If you're familiar with crow house I might insert a picture if I remember but I did it in a punch needle and as a cross stitch but I painted it in the round and it had the like the tongues or the pennies going all the way around it and I it was super prim because I sanded it and the wood was showing through and it was gorgeous but I sold it and, you know, sometimes you sell something and go, oh, man, I wish I went and sold that. That was one of them. And after that, I could not find a big round dough board to save my life. Well, guess what? I couldn't get over the breadboards and dough boards I found at the show that were so reasonably priced. I couldn't believe it. So I got this big, huge one. Well... Hold on, let me show you the first one I bought. So this is the first one I bought. It's super cool, it's got a little metal hanger up there, okay? The bottom piece is missing, like this, see how it's finished like that? It's supposed to have one down here and it's not there. So that is a bummer. Then I saw this. Look, it's round and it's about the si same size as the one that I painted and sold. And I've been looking for another large one ever since. 35 bucks I got this for, which is such a steal. It's such a good deal. Well, this same lady, she knows how much I love these. And she says, oh, I love them too. I have a bunch of them and I sell them every so often. And uh, she goes, I, I'm so happy that someone else loves them as much as I do. And she goes, oh, did you see this other big one I have over here? I'm like, no. It's old. So I bought this one as well. This one oh, is ginormous. I haven't measured it, but it's probably a 24 by 36, something like that. Or maybe a 24 by 30. I don't know. But yeah, I got this one for like 75 bucks. And it's those ones that are meant to be put on your stove top. To protect your stove top and you can set stuff on it and stuff. Oh my gosh, I love this thing. Super cool. So that's my haul from the show. Did I, I think that might be all the haul I have anyways. Yeah, I think it is. Okay, that's all the haul I have. I've been wanting to show you these dog portraits, you know, whims of, my whims of the past. So I, about how many years ago now? I don't know, I challenged myself to paint a dog portrait every morning, I allow, or, or a cat portrait, but I'm such a dog freak. But I would allow myself an hour to an hour and a half to paint these watercolor dog portraits so I don't know if I can do them in any sort of order of how I painted them I wish there was maybe there's a date on one of them oh yeah oh nine oh some of them I actually wrote how long it took me to paint them yeah this was in 2009 so it looks like some of them took a couple hours 
Some took an hour, like this one's an hour and a half, hour and, like that one's an hour and 25 minutes. So anyway, I will just share these with you. And some of them are my own pets, so I'll kind of let you know which ones are my pets. All right, so this is Buster. This is Buster at his finest. Doesn't he look grumpy? Oh my gosh. He's a sweet boxer that um, he passed away. Oh, it's been a while. It's probably been eight or nine years now. Whoops, the, our sweet Buster is gone. But I love him. And I like how, because he was right by the window and the sun was coming in on, on him. So I like how he kind of fades into the background of the paper. I love that. And then this is, his name is Spats and he's a rat terrier. This one took me two hours to paint. This is our sweet kitty girl. I don't have any information written on the back. But this is the only cat I've ever had in my life. We called her Kitty Girl, but I was so embarrassed to call her that at the vet. We named her Mittens. So all her records say Mittens, but we would just say, here, Kitty Girl. And she'd come running. She was an indoor cat only. But I love, I love cats' eyes. I love them. This is Paco. Took me an hour and a half. To paint Paco. He's a Pomeranian. I didn't write that on the back, but fluffy and happy. Look at that. It looks like he's smiling. This is Taco. <laughs> um, Chihuahua, obviously. Didn't have any other information on that one. This is Rambo. This one took me an hour and a half. I like how he's just kind of half of his face is on there. And I think he was a boxer. He looks like a boxer anyway. I love this guy. This is Bruiser. This one took me two hours to paint. Looks sad, doesn't he? Oh, I love the colors in this one. This is Gizmo. This one took me two and a half. This is a Bichon Frise named Tessa. Two hours. I think I started out wanting to paint them in an hour, but two hours, it sounds like, seemed to be the best time for them. <laughs> this guy is funny. This is Duncan, the pug, a black pug, which you don't normally see all black pugs. This is Maggie. Golden Retriever. Looking at these makes me want to get another dog. This is Chumley. Boston Terrier? No. Yeah. Yeah, Boston Terrier. My friend Jill had a Boston Terrier. When we were growing up. I love this one so much, the lighting on it. Bugabee Pug. I just think I captured the the lighting. And again, he kind of fades off. Like the light's coming in from the side there. And he kind of fades off. It looks so sad. It's precious. Then we have a bull mastiff named Oscar. With a ginormous tongue. I like the red background on him. This one is Buster. This is our dog. That was his favorite little orange squeaker. Buster was a lot of fun to paint. <laughs> I have more of him than I think any of our other pets. You know how they say, like, a, a smell can take you back in time and you can relive that moment sometimes like it just brings back memories and that one I just showed you a buster something happened that day so every time I see that painting I can't help but think of it I I can remember the exact painting I was painting when 9-11 happened as well yeah there's just certain things that really move you this is buster again this is when he was a little pup so sweet 
This one is Madge. Oh, is that a Brittany? I think it's a Brittany. I don't know why I didn't name it Brittany then. This is a Weimariner, which is, uh, oh, I named it Maxwell. This one took two hours. I really wanted to get a Weimariner. Oh, they're so majestic and their eyes are so cool. They're beautiful dogs. It's such a pretty gray color. Here's another Weimariner, more in the blue shades, named Sadie. Then we got Sparta, Rhodesian Ridgeback. A little Yorkie. This one took a one and a half hours. I don't have a name on this one. Another golden, Roscoe. Whoops, one and a quarter hours. Another one, a Buster. May 8th, 2009, one and a half hours. This little face. Oh, and then here's Daisy. So Buster and Daisy, we had them at the same time. They grew up together. She outlived him by maybe five years or so. Daisy was a mutt. She was a mixture of chow and lab. Here's another one of my sweet Daisy sleeping. Hope these are coming in clear. I don't know if my glasses are dirty or what, but they look blurry to me. Here is a St. Bernard. I don't have a name on that one. It took me an hour and a half, it says. Here is a Basset Hound, uh, one and a half hours. I didn't name that one either. <laughs> Look at those eyes, oh my gosh. Bring a tear to your eye. <laughs> Here is Casey. Now Casey was one of our dogs. This was the first dog we got after Kevin and I were married. The place that I worked, uh, the girl I worked with, she lived in an apartment with her husband and this little puppy came into the parking lot and she said, we can't keep it. At that time, Kevin and I were in an apartment too, but we had just bought a house and we were moving into the house like in a week. So we went ahead and took her and she ended up having, what was it, 12 puppies? Yeah, that was quite the time. All right, and then we have, oh, Bella. I forget the name of that. I think that might be a Brittany. That other one I showed earlier was not a Brittany. I can't think of what that dog was. Oh, I think the other was a King Spaniel. King, King's, oh. There's a C-H work. King, King Charles. King, okay, so let me go back. Now it's bugging me. King Charles. Isn't that a King Charles Spaniel, I think? I don't know. Anyway, this is a Brittany. But I named it Bella, you know, why not? <laughs> this is funny because it's kind of cartoonish. A little dachshund. That one took an hour. So see, you can tell that extra half hour to hour, you can get a lot more detail. This is a black lab. This one took an hour. And I didn't name it or nothing. And we have another one, a Buster. I love that orange background with him. This was one and one quarter hours. Another one of Daisy. Another one of Daisy. And this, this one and the last one of Buster, they're from photos that I took where they were sitting next to one another. This is not zoomed in, is it? Or not focused? They were sitting next to one another in the sun, the way the sun was coming in on them, I took a picture. So that picture and then this picture of Buster are from the same photo. I mean, it just glows. You can tell the sun was just shining on them. And then that's hers. And I love that purple background too. So anyway, those are my dog portraits I'd been wanting to show you guys. I happened to stumble on them when I was cleaning something out one day and I'm like oh you guys might be interested because 
Y'all like cats and dogs, right? Okay, that's it. Uh, let's move on to giveaway. Last week, uh, you had to say spring. So I will insert the YouTube random comment picker here. All right, let's see who the winner is this week. And the winner is Phyllis Haynes. She said spring is such a beautiful time of year. The trees are budding. The flowers are starting to bloom. Spring is glorious. I totally agree, Phyllis. And no more snow. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for your comments. Congratulations, Phyllis. So the prize was the spring 2021 punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine i had two of them so i'm giving one away and phyllis if you already have one just you know pass it forward give it to a friend or family member that you think would be interested in that so today i'm going to have two giveaways and it's going to be the two finished pieces that i showed so uh, 178 god is good and 165 for you so i have two winners and what I want you to tell me is what do you like to collect other than like cross stitching needlework stuff? I like to collect oil cans, old vintage oil cans and old like child's toys, like the sand pails. I got one up there. I got like a little horn, all the tin type of things. I love all those. Obviously, I collect the antique books because I use them in my finishing. What else do I collect? Oh, anything, you know, wooden that I can paint on. So yeah, I got a little tea set, little tin tea set from some kids, you know, or that were for kids. So yeah, what do you guys like to collect other than your needlework stuff? And if you don't collect anything else, just say, I don't collect anything else other than my shirts and linen and or fabric for quilting or what have you. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And please, if you could uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel, that'd be awesome. Oh, I was gonna say something that <laughs> just was there and then it was gone. Those moments are seem to be more often than not anymore. But anyways, uh, I love your comments. Keep them coming. And don't forget to visit my uh my website or my blog or whatever you want to call it, TeresaCogut.com. I didn't blog last week, so I'm just going to combine last week's to this week, I think, and post it all as one because last week was too crazy. So my plans for this coming week, though, I, I'm not going to work on that winter cross stitch just because I'm so not in the mood. It's spring and it's beautiful and I'm just going to put it away and hopefully... Next winter, I'll finish it because I, I don't have that much to do on it. And then the other thing that I'm going to start is from the Celebrate book. Because here's the thing. I want to stitch things to show. I only want to stitch my stuff because that kind of only makes sense. I mean, if I had more time, I would love, oh my gosh, there's a lot out there that I would love to stitch. But, and I don't want to stitch my stuff that I already have done, that my model stitchers have done, because I already have it, right? So I thought, oh, I could go to my Celebrate book and start pulling things from there to stitch. So that's what I'm going to work on. And then uh, just, I don't know, maybe I will stitch other people's stuff. It depends on how fast I get and, you know, how much I can get, how much I can get done. So that, and I'm going to work on the punch needle for uh, my May release. This coming week, I told Kevin I'm gonna start uh, fully finishing and writing the direction and photographing and everything for our May release because that'll be here before you know it. And then, uh, and I said right after that, I'm just gonna go right into the August release. The August release is going to be big because it's gonna be the Needlework Expo. So I have a lot of work still ahead of me with, which is good, I mean, right? So anyways, thanks for joining me today and don't forget, create every day, bye.
Thank you.